Hello, welcome to this video. It's a continuation from the multi-fact analysis using shared dimensions presentation that uh, Thomas Nahn and myself gave at Tableau Conference this year, TC24. Uh, as of recording, this is on uh, Thursday, May 9th, and this feature is about a month away. Um, what I did want to show about this add-on video, and you do have to watch the uh, video from Tableau Conference first in order to know how I created this model, but I want to continue on with a couple of use cases that weren't included uh, at the TC presentation and in the recording. Um, one other thing I wanted to do is you'll notice that I'm in right now I'm in Tableau Cloud and it's a Tableau Cloud beta site. So this is a feature that is going to be available in uh, in cloud server and Tableau desktop. So that's great. It's available everywhere. Um, uh, you love Tableau and we think it's going to be a real game changer. Uh, so if I take a look here, um, the last thing I did in the TC video is that I connected a date uh, table um, to uh, a number of other tables. So if you look, I connected to all the other tables. It doesn't even require any kind of relationship um, calculation. So here's return date to date. If I came up to this line, you'd see it'd be order date to date. And if I came up to this line, it's inventory date to date. So um, let's take a look at a uh, and create a workbook from this data source. So Again, brand new workbook building on the last one. So what we might want to do is um, we might want to do a time-based analysis, which of course most analysis analyses make the most sense that way, uh, or at least certainly a lot of them do. And um, what I showed was that our inventory levels were very high for tables. But again, I showed that as a snapshot. And what you'd really want to know is that over time. So why we need to join tables together if we're going to use um, multiple base tables, um, uh, in this case, they're also fact tables that um, uh, that work to um, show us, uh, you know, different types of dates. Here's what I mean. So if I wanted to look at inventory as an example, and I've got inventory date and I pull inventory date out. And again, remember, this is just generated sample data to, to show the feature. If I were to pull inventory date out um, and ask for that continuous, you'll see that inventory only gets captured a few days a month. Again, so effectively, um, if we looked at it deeper, any given product, its inventory gets counted one day a month. Um, and if we wanted to compare that to say, or um, orders to know how much we're selling compared to what we have in inventory, um, if we were to take order date and also drag this up here and make it continuous, you'll see, of course, order dates come um, all the time. We sell con continually. So, um, and, and in any case, how would we compare these together? It gets pretty complicated, right? But in this case, what we have um, is if we clear the sheet, um, what we can do um, is because we have a relationship between dates. Now, what we could actually do is we could pull this date from our date field up. And if we showed every date for this, um, you'll see, of course, it's 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 every date that's in that um, in that date field. And now what we could do is we could drag out our inventory levels and we could also drag out um, again, which is going to look weird this way. So let's take a look at it again. We already know it's aggregated monthly. So let's look at it monthly. It's going to look like this. You'll notice it starts in January. That's when we started tracking inventory. Um, and if we look at order date, or sorry, orders is an example, which our order um, quantity shows up under line items because we sell individual line items. So if I were to take quantity and bring it up here, you'll notice that it's smart enough, uh, Tableau is smart enough in this case to plot that. So this is effectively the order date and this is effectively the inventory date because um, now they have a relationship on this common date field. So again, um, the axis got extended because we had, um, more data. So what we could do is we could take this date uh, from our dates and bring it up to filters. And um, what we want to do is um, say we want to take uh, relative dates in this case, and then we only want this year because that's all we've been tracking for inventory anyway. Um, so there it is. And we could um, take this now and we could do a dual axis on it, of course. And uh, if we synchronize the axes, what you're going to see is that we're carrying about um, three times um, the inventory uh, to sales in any given month. So I don't know, that may or may not be good, depending on the business you're in approximately 90 days of inventory. Um, 
uh, again, would would vary a lot between industries. So, but it's just sample data anyway. I'm going to create a calculated field here, um, which I'm going to call inventory uh, to sales ratio. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go inventory divided by um, quantity. And instead, we could take, you'll notice this, because it comes from multiple tables, comes at the bottom. You'd be used to this with relationships. Um, now, if we were to take inventory and quantity off and instead just show this ratio, um, you'll see, again, the ratio is about three to one, like I said, dipped a little bit here. But what, what the demo showed is that our problem was that our inventory levels were way too high on tables. So let's see if that shows up over time. So I'm just going to create a quick little Boolean calculation here that says tables. Um, and it's all it's going to be is subcategory um, equal to tables. So this is going to give me a true or false. And Tableau is going to be able to make the join at runtime, even though... Um, that the, the tables subcategories aren't in um, either the inventory table or this uh, or, or the uh, line items table. If I drag this on, it's still going to be able to make that join. And what we're going to be able to see here is that this lines are tables and this is everything else. Um, stays on that about three to one ratio here, dips a little bit um, with tables. That, but we see tables is crazy going anywhere from 4.2 and then the current most current period, it's all the way up to 9.25. So clearly it's even trending worse. So again, that just pops out of our data, completely different um, areas of the business, different tables. Um, but if we also bring together a common date, you'll see how that um, comes together. The other example that I didn't get a chance to get to would be uh, if we wanted to take a look at our customers, uh, we might want to ask the question about uh, who are our best customers, say, based on sales. So I'm going to double click on sales and double click on customer name here. And then I like it a little more uh, rotated this way. And let's um, uh, let's take that and, um, and sort of descending. So as we know, with Superstore, Sean Miller comes on top. Again, if we did this by profit, you know, we lose money on Sean Miller again. Uh, so we could do this whole thing based on profit, but I think just because the nature of the superstore data doesn't make a lot of sense. So, um, but this shows who our best customers you would think are based on sales. But again, now we know we have returns, which we weren't taking into consideration with these customers. So if I come down to my returns table and I bring, uh, so that's sales, so the equivalent is refund amount and bring it up here, um, you'll see that it used to be that Raymond Buck, we thought was our third best customer, but look, he, um, he bought $15,000 worth of stuff, but he returned 14,000 of it. And Tom Ashbrook here, um, similar kind of scenario, not really our fourth highest customer. So um, what we could do um, is we could similarly take this and go create calculate a field uh, and we could go uh, true customer value or whatever you want to call it. And then um, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to take um, sum of sales, which in theory always has to be a positive number. And then I'm going to take a uh, refund amount off it. Now, because sometimes if they haven't done a refund, um, Tableau is going to do an interesting thing with this calculation if you left it this way. So you're really going to want to zero null it because um, if they don't have anything in the refund table means they haven't refunded anything. So this is what we really want. Um, and then if we took our true customer value and put it on the end here, um, we're going to get a different looking um, set of customers, right? So now we don't need these anymore, the two parts of our calculation. And if we do this and resort it, you'll see that um, uh, who was previously our third and fourth best customer by sales now drop way down the list. So again, interesting. You can bring it from different areas of the business and get a more true uh, look at, at how those people contribute. So for now, that's all I wanted to show to build on what we already saw at Tableau Conference. And hopefully I'll do a few more demos. And in those demos, uh, we'll be able to look uh, deeper into some of the other things we can do with shared dimensions and why it's called shared dimensions, um, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again in those videos. And thanks for tuning in.